I am going to be reading to you from a book called The Starseed Transmissions. This book was written by Ken Carey. And this is an excerpt from that book, which I am going to put on pictures I have taken of light. So I'm going to entitle this as a series of excerpts from books, and the first one being this from Ken Carey's book, and it, it, they will be called Written in Light. Now I'll read you just a tiny bit that's uh, of of what he said about who was doing this communication. I have communed with these spatial intelligences. Our biogravitational fields seem to merge, no, as I communed, and our awareness blend, and my nervous system seemed to become available to them as a channel for communication. During our interviews, I would, re would perceive reality not only through my own perceptual mechanism, but through theirs as well. The resulting synthesis provided for a relatively accurate approximation in human language of the awareness they brought. Now, I gotta go back, and here's the first page of it. And this is the speaking of those intelligences. As I search your symbol storage system for a word with which to express something, of the reality in which you exist as one with your creator. I come across the American Indian word Nahuatl. It is a term which you understand to mean everything that cannot be named. This is a good word for the region of being, the region of unity. I will use this word for a moment to emphasize a point. In the pre-fall state of awareness, you existed in the Nahuatl the all, the everything, the nothing, the primal void, where all exist in a state of potential. This is the creator that surrounds creation, like the sea surrounds a fish. Out of this noggle you are called many times to dwell for the space of a relationship in its opposite, the tonal. The tonal is everything that can be named. It is the imaginary world of God in which all apparent differences exist. It is the playground of what is. The tonal draws all of its sustenance from the Nagual. It cannot exist apart from the Nagual. While the Nagual is a dynamic yet steady state of rest, the tonal or manifest physical universe is continuously flashing on and off. This oscillation occurs in all things manifest, from the smallest subatomic particle to the greatest galaxy. All of us, angels, humans, anything that can be named, are only in form one half of the time. The other half of the time we exist in the totality of being. This totality of being that we have been calling the Nagua has been called God has also been called God the Father. It is the life of God the Father that animates all creation. It is this reality that all healthy creatures oscillate back and forth to and exist in half the time. In this reality, we do not exist in time or space, for we can name these. They are both features of the manifest universe. From this spaceless, timeless state, we derive all energy, blessing, and nourishment. This always holds true, even for you in the fallen condition. The difference is that in the fallen state, you are not aware of this process, and therefore unable to participate in it consciously. By forfeiting your ability to oscillate in consciousness, between the two realities in which you dwell, you are restricted to an awareness of just the tonal, just the material, conceptual world. You still receive your nourishment from the light of the Nagua, but no longer directly, only through animals, plants, and minerals. You are unconscious of being and conscious only of form. How did you lose the ability to shift your awareness from deity to identity, 
from form to metaphorm. How did you lose God consciousness? How did you fall into the illusion of separation? I will tell you. It was through a simple lack of faith. It was through a loss of confidence in the absolute perfection of the universal design. This was brought about by the entry of a single factor into your existence. Fear. The serpent in the garden, the devil in your history. Through a subtle process of reasoning, this being encouraged you to move in a pattern of activity that has come to be called original sin. It was a pattern of activity that you were never designed to move in. With a clever and subtle lie, you were convinced to not exactly stop trusting in God, but to stop trusting exclusively in God. The moment you did this, your consciousness began to shift from God-centeredness to self-centeredness, and for the first time, you became more aware of your identity in form than of your identity in God. This shift in awareness was minimal at first, but enough to begin what was to become a long spiral downward through denser levels of energy, bond of energy bondage and restraint. For Satan, your tempter, is the materializing influence which in its right place is responsible for the bonding of energy in the creation of matter. As you began to focus more and more upon your identity in form, you began thinking in terms of defending that form with unnecessary and cumbersome ego structures. It became harder for you to avoid identifying with your experience. You began to carry over past patterns of behavioral response into new relationships. This made you less effective in those relationships because you were no longer fully present, no longer using the fullness of your potential. You were beginning to build up around yourself energized thought structures that imprisoned you. You were drawn by simple gravitational attraction to those realms of space where energy was in the process of being bonded, where matter was being created. Particles of physical substance began to gather along the magnetic lines of your thought structures, and you began to identify with denser and denser levels of physical expression. This process went on for a long while before you actually found yourself in any kind of physical garden. When you did, you had already fallen a long way from your original state of grace, but you were still functioning on a level of awareness far enough above and beyond your present condition to give rise to all the myths and legends of a physical paradise. The physical Garden of Eden lasted for many centuries on earth time before the momentum of the materializing processes caused you to rely so much upon the physical senses that you became cut off from the direct nourishment of divine light. In reality, you have never been cut off from this nourishment, but as your sense of identity became almost exclusively wedded to your physical bodies, their growing density began demanding more and more of Earth's substance for their support. You finally reached a point where you could no longer meet the demands of your physical bodies without work. It is at this point that your chronicles state that you were driven from the garden. In truth, you were never driven from the garden. The garden is still there, surrounding you even now. Language is only capable of communicating on one level at a time. Yet the fall was a simultaneous, multi-leveled occurrence. While you were clothing yourself with increasing layers of material identification, you were also becoming more and more fragmented within yourselves. As you began to bring into your relationships a sense of identity based on previous relationships, you were not only lessening your own presence and effectiveness in current relationships, you were also creating separation within yourself. 
none of your past experiences were comprehensive enough to fully identify with in the present moment. Yet you began to rely on them for your understanding of and approach to the present moment. Thus the whole process of the fall was accompanied by corresponding fragmentation of your sense of identity, your very sense of self. By the time of the physical Garden of Eden, you were already perceiving yourself to be more than one. The sexual process came into play in order to produce physical projections within which these apparently separate entities you had split yourself into could take form. Even to this day, these apparently separate beings are, are but your own fragmented reflections. In the fallen state, you perceive them as separate and distinct. Yet despite all this talk of a fall and original sin, you are not held prisoner by events that transpired in the dim reaches of your collective memory. You are not born into sin. You are born daily into the presence of God. Yet daily you reenact the original foolishness that is recorded in all of your ancient chronicles. Daily you commit original sin. Daily you eat of the forbidden fruit, and it is from moment to moment that you keep yourself imprisoned by allowing a dubious, rational thought process to come between you and your immediate sensing of God's will. This was a hesitation that led you to your initial fall from grace, and it is the same hesitation that keeps you now in a fallen state. There should rightly be no interval between the determination of the need to take action and the implementation of that action. This rational interference is what caused you to stumble in your primal dance of trust with God. You are now, in effect, sleeping under the influence of what could almost be seen as a spell, an illusion, that prevents you from experiencing the clarity of perception that is your natural birthright. Our mission to this planet is to awaken you from sleep by whatever, by whatever means necessary. And that is all of that I put in this film. But if you want to hear the entire book read, look in the description bar of this video and I will have